zinc. You've probably seen it on the supplement shelves, heard it mentioned in immune boosting ads, or maybe have even taken it for a cold, like a lozenge. But should you be taking a zinc supplement regularly? And is it actually helping? Or is it doing more harm than good? I'm Janet McConnell, certified fitness educator, healthy longevity advocate, and I help people 50 and up cut through the noise and make smart science-backed decisions for their health. And in this video, I'm going to break down the real benefits, the signs of deficiency, and safety tips that you need to know so you can make informed choices and support your long-term vitality. A lot of people assume more is better. It's kind of a human tendency to do that, but with zinc, that's not always the best idea. In fact, there is a Goldilocks zone. Too little and your body suffers too much and you can block other essential nutrients or throw your immune system out of balance. So just a quick side note, I'm not a doctor. You've figured that out by now. And this video isn't medical advice. My goal is to help you stay informed just like I stay informed and ask better questions and work with your practitioner to make the best choices for your body. Now, zinc is what I call the quiet powerhouse. It doesn't get all the attention like vitamin D, vitamin C, magnesium. They're kind of the darlings of the supplement family, but they play a critical role. Immune response, wound healing, even DNA synthesis of all things, and taste and smell and skin health and even cognitive support as we age. It's involved in over 300 enzymatic reactions in the body, and yet most people don't give it a second thought. So what are the signs you may be low in zinc? Just like zinc is not the superstar that some of the other supplements are, deficiency also flies under the radar. And some of the subtle signs you can watch for are frequent colds or infections, poor wound healing, loss of taste or smell, hair thinning, and brain fog or slow thinking. Also, older adults, vegans, vegetarians, and those with gut issues like IBS or Crohn's disease tend to be at a higher risk. Now, these symptoms can also point to other nutritional deficiencies or health issues. So how do you know that zinc is the culprit? This is why it's important to dig a little deeper than just the list of symptoms because the ones I just named sound common for quite a few different things. The most common way to check on this is to get a plasma zinc blood test, though it's not always definitive because zinc is stored throughout the body, not just in the bloodstream. So levels can look normal even though it's low on the tissue level. That's why I recommend looking at symptoms in context along with your diet, your age, your digestive health and even how long it takes you to bounce back from an injury or illness. If you're concerned, it's worth it to bring this up with a functional medicine practitioner or a nutrition-informed doctor who can help you assess the bigger picture. Now, as always, food is always the first thing to consider. Supplementation is just that. It helps things along, but the food is very important. So the best food sources for zinc, if you want to know how to boost it naturally, focus on these top food sources. The best and richest by far is not super popular unless you really like it. Oysters. <laughs> I happen to like them a lot, but I know they give people the ick sometimes. So but that's a really rich source of zinc. Another is just the typical meat sources of beef, chicken, and pork. But vegans and vegetarians, you're covered. Pumpkin seeds, cashews, chickpeas, lentils, the legume family, all of those have a good source of dietary zinc. And if you are plant-based in your diet, here's a tip. 
those healthy legumes and seeds contain something called phytate, also called phytic acid, which can block zinc absorption. I didn't know this until I did a deep dive in getting ready to talk to you today. So I'm learning too. Phytic acid. Okay. So this is why it is important to soak, sprout, or ferment those items because it helps to break down that phytic acid and lets the zinc into your system much more readily. Interestingly, phytates are natural compounds that are found in seeds, nuts, legumes, and whole grains. They serve as a storage form of phosphorus for the plant. But in the human body, they act as an anti-nutrient, almost like a barrier or a shield that the nut or seed has for itself. Simply speaking, that just means that they bind to minerals like zinc, iron, calcium, magnesium, and reduce how much your body can absorb. So when someone says, and I've heard this, plant-based sources of zinc aren't bioavailable, this is why. The good news, you can reduce phytate by soaking, sprouting, and fermenting those foods. That's why traditional food prep methods like sourdough bread, which is fermented, or sprouted lentils can be a better pathway to nutrient absorption. Having been raised in my childhood home by vegetarians, I remember my mom soaking lentils, beans, other legumes. There'd be a bowl on the counter in the back with all of these things covered with water. And I'm like, what are you doing? And she would always say that it sped up cooking time, which is also true. But the real nutritional benefit is that it reduces phytate. So how do you choose a supplement wisely? This goes beyond just food sources. If you and your doctor decide that supplementation makes sense, here's what to keep in mind. Form matters. Zinc, picolinate, citrate, or gluconate tend to absorb much better in our system. Fact number two, watch the dosage. Stick to the RDA unless otherwise advised. Now, the RDA for 50 and over is 11 milligrams for men and 8 milligrams for women. So when you're figuring out your supplement, and you find the right form, don't forget to check if you're taking a multivitamin because there might already be some zinc in it. So you can kind of do the math and make sure you're getting the right amount. And a quick heads up, make sure that when you take your zinc supplement, you take it with food because in some people it can cause nausea. So not on an empty stomach if you can help it. The downside of too much zinc, we talked a little bit about that Goldilocks zone. So too much zinc can quietly sabotage your health without realizing it. Chronic high doses may lower your good cholesterol, the HDL, and block your body's ability to absorb copper and iron. It can suppress your immune function and nausea, stomach pain, or headaches. So watch out for those. Make sure that you get that dosage right in the sweet spot. If you're supplementing long-term, stay within the safe limits. 11 milligrams for men over 50 and 8 milligrams for women over 50. Unless you are working with a practitioner and you have a specific goal in mind and they recommend otherwise. So bottom line, here's my take. Zinc can be incredibly helpful, but it's not a free-for-all. If you're low, it can absolutely support your energy immune system and brain function. That's good. But if you're already getting enough, extra zinc can backfire. So think food first, stay curious, and partner with your doctor or nutrition savvy practitioner if you're thinking about adding supplements. So did you learn something new today? I did. I'm telling you. You guys write the best questions in the comments, and I find myself thinking, 
Well, that's a good question. I'm not sure about the details on that. And so then I end up learning more. I have a broad base of information, but there's some details missing here and there. So don't be afraid to ask me something in the comments. If it's a quick answer, a little thing, I'll answer you in the comments. But if it's a broader topic, it might end up as a topic for a future video. So please keep them coming. And if you're on a mission to stay strong and stay sharp, be sure to come back often. Let's learn together. So until next time, honor your age and power up your health.